Um, so welcome. I'll add my welcome to, to Rachel's this morning. Uh, today, yes, is the, the second of, uh, of a series on blessing. Um, I wasn't sure which way it was going to go, so I prompt with unexpected blessing and thank you. The Lord is amazing. I wasn't so sure. And you open your heart to the Lord and he guides you and then affirms his decision for that. So yes, we are looking at blessing this morning. Are we are we working? I'm I'm working. I don't know about the technology. We'll work, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> so we're looking we are looking at an expected blessing this morning. If it comes up, it comes up. So I just want to start by asking a question really, but we'll start with well two questions. So how would you define unexpected? When someone says something is unexpected to you, what 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 comes to mind? How do you understand that? How do we process that? Out of the blue, suddenly, it's a surprise. We, oh, it's coming. We're getting there. Out of the ordinary, not on the radar. Yeah, so all really good ways of doing it. But can we can we have the next one, Graham? Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so my question this morning, just to lead into to the sermon, is. Is there such a thing as unexpected blessing? What would you say? Yes. Show of hands for yes. Oh, fairly universal. Oh, I could be controversial this morning. This could be good. Yes. Debate. So the first, the main text I want to bring to you this morning is Matthew 5. And it should come up here. Um, better known, if those of you who know any scripture, is the Beatitudes. Um, I love that because it's the B attitude. It's how we should be. So this is part of Christ's uh, sermon. And I'm going to read it from the message. I mean, I, I blame Rachel entirely for, for getting really into the message because uh, I think actually it works really well for a lot of things. It's a, a translation that I'm becoming more and more fond of. And I know it from the NIV and I know it from the King's James, but actually I really like the way this reads. So we're just going to read through this. So it says, when Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed up a hill, up to the clouds. And those who were apprenticed to him, so the apostles and that, and committed, climbed with him. Arriving at quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. And this is what he says. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. You're blessed when you feel that you've lost what is most dear to you because only then can you be embraced by the one who is most dear to you you're blessed when you your content with who you are no more no less that's the moment you find yourself proud owners of everything that can't be bought you're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God because his food and drink is the best meal you'll ever have. You're blessed when you care. At that moment of being careful, you find yourself cared for. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and your heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of competing or fighting. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. Yeah, not my favorite part of this one, I have to admit. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Not only that, but count yourself blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort. And they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Give cheer even. For though they don't like it, I do. And all heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten this kind of trouble. 
So why, why that verse? Why, why am I bringing that when, you, when we start thinking about unexpected blessings? Well, as we looked last week, as I said, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of examples of the word blessed or blessing in Scripture. Just in the Old Testament, as I said, there's 60 plus in Genesis alone before you even get into the rest of the other 65 books. So, but when you think about blessing, do you ever think about those stories that some of us know so well of the people who had miracles or went through things in the Bible? Where does that blessing come from? Was their blessing unexpected? A couple of examples from the Old Testament. We've got 1 Kings 17 and then 12 to 16, which should be up there at some point. This is the, uh, the, the widow who Elijah is sent to. And she says, when asked for uh, food and, and water, she says, I swear as surely as God lives, I don't have so much as a biscuit. I have a handful of flour and a jar with some small oil and you found me collecting sticks to make a fire to make my last meal for my son and me after which we will die. I'm fairly sure that going through that for that woman going through the worst famine that that land had known at that time. She is a woman on her own. She's a widow. She's lost her husband. She has a family to look after her son. In that time and culture, the family line, that progression. She's not just looking at the end of her life, she's looking at the end of her family line. Her dynasty, her legacy will end. She's preparing to die. But she responds with kindness to a stranger. Her motivations for it, her, her main thoughts, might have just been, well, it doesn't matter if I have a little less, we're going to die anyway. doesn't matter what her motivation was. She responds with kindness. And through that kindness, you get Elijah's promise, or God's promise through Elijah. Don't worry. Go ahead and do what you're going to do. But first, make a small biscuit and bring it to me. Then go ahead and make your meal. And because she obeys and is faithful, she is in receipt of the unexpected continual blessing through one of the hardest times that she and her family have known. The book of Job, the story of Job. 42 chapters of suffering. I won't make the, um, the, the joke that uh, is quite often made about Job that Certain things were left and not taken from him. But in the beginning of Job, what you have is a successful man. A man of God who is righteous, knows him, and has been blessed. And he loses almost everything. His family line, his children, his sons and daughters, all his financial supplies, his, his money, all tied up in livestock as it was for that culture, gone. And then his health is afflicted. In no sense of this either do I think that Job was feeling particularly blessed at that moment in time. And Job is rightly held up as an example of going through these things and relying and drawing close in on God. And because he is faithful again, because he is content with who he is and his identity in Christ, uh, in, God, in Jehovah at the time, Job 42, 12 to 17 reads this. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former. He had 14,000 sheep. 6,000 camels, a 1,000 yoke of oxen, and a 1,000 donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. It gives you the names, but it makes the point that they nowhere in the land were more beautiful women than Job's daughters. And their father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. Very unusual for the time, but they were held in such high esteem. And after this, Job lived 140 years more. 
he saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. And so Job, Job died, an old man full of years. Truly blessed. Knowing God's blessing. What about some of the people in the New Testament? What about, um, you know, when you think, well, did they feel blessed in their situations? When uh, Christ is in the synagogue, and it was recorded in Luke 13, uh, 10 to 13, if you want to look it up later, I don't think it's on a slide. Um, he sees her and he heals her. There's no record that she asks for healing. He sees her, he takes pity on her, and he says, straighten and lifts and straightens her up. A woman who's been crippled and bent over for 18 years. And he just does it. Completely unexpected for this woman. In John 9, 1, 8, we have the story of Christ healing a man who was born blind. But it reads... As he was going along, he saw a blind man who had been blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? Was it this man uh, or was it his parents? And Christ says, it was neither him nor his parents, but this has happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And after saying this, he spats on the ground, made some mud with saliva and put it on the man's eyes. He tells him to go and wash and the man's eyesight is resumed. Again, there's no record that this man even knew who Jesus was. That he'd even heard of him. Or that he asked for healing. The blessing he attains is completely unexpected. This man has never seen. He doesn't know what it is. It isn't something he's lost. This is something he's never had. So it completely is coming from the blind side. So in answer to the question that I started with, is there such a thing as unexpected blessing? I'm going to quote my pastor from my last church who used to say yes and no <laughs> what we've seen in these verses and what you see in many verses is the unexpected blessing is only truly unexpected when you don't know God and every single one of us here at some point will have had that moment of true unexpected blessing that first moment when we encountered Christ. The blessing that that encounter becomes. That first moment, as we were saying, as I said last week, about where the blessing comes from. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. But the blessing of grace that we receive is only ever unexpected on the first time. So once we've experienced that first unexpected blessing, do we truly then say, oh, that was an unexpected blessing? Why? When back in Matthew, it says all of those promises. For the more traditional, those who are grieving will be, you know, will be comforted. Those who are sad will be made right. But it also then calls on to those who basically take on the Great Commission, look after his people. Those who, uh, you know, in the uh, parable of the goats and the sheep, when he turns around to the faithful and says, you know, you saw me hungry and you fed me. You saw me naked and you clothed me. You saw me in prison and you came and visited me. I was ill and you looked after me. And they went, when did, when, Lord, when did we do this? And it's like, no, I bless you because when you did this for the least of among you, you did it to me. And so I bless you. 
there are times in our lives when we do get unexpected blessings. But it's not that we shouldn't expect God to bless us. We have that promise. We have that real promise. What I would say is, he blesses us in unexpected ways. To say that we receive unexpected blessings, as in we didn't know it was coming, we didn't expect it, it completely blindsided us, it was completely beyond our imagination, only proves one thing, that God has a far greater imagination than we do. We are constrained by the limits of this physical form. We are made in the image, as I said last week, of God. We are a special creation, but we are not God. And his imagination, his love, his ability is boundless to bless. Amen. I've asked, a couple of people came to me after I asked for if anyone would be free to share any testimonies. And I've asked Ruth if she would share a couple with, with us this morning of unexpected, truly unexpected. <laughs> And then I want to share one as well, and then we'll, we'll move on. So the first unexpected blessing was I didn't get to my first choice at university. So, but the university I ended up at, which I was very disappointed at, but it was really good. That's where I met the man who became my husband, Phil. So that was an expected blessing. And the other unexpected blessing was there was an occasion when I was facing a Christmas homeless and forgotten and it was going to be a terrible Christmas and I didn't know where I was going to stay and this friend at university she said to me oh come back home and her parents who I'd never met invited me to come and stay with them and they were pastors of a church and they had a meal like Graham setting up and I would never experienced such love. People bought me presents and they treated me like, this family treated me like I was just part of the family and it was just so amazing. And what really came out of that was this church that I went along with them to, they believed in the gifts of the Holy Spirit were for today. And I'd been like really offhand about this, you know, but I'd never experienced such love. And because I'd never experienced such love, I knew that the things that were happening with the Holy Spirit had to be good. They had to be right because God's love was so powerful. Thank you, Ruth. Um, Ruth, told me about those a couple of weeks ago and I was so I was so keen that at least you would let me share them but it was even more powerful when the person that has been through that shares them um, I just want to add one for my thing I mean um, most of you who know me here and for any of you who don't um, for visitors uh, I'm a nurse by trade I have been for a long time and I work in intensive care but the last few years have taken their toll and I've been looking for other areas within nursing to to kind of go into. I've applied for a total of three jobs over the last couple of years and unfortunately been unsuccessful in all of them. But in each and every one have stepped out uh, with your prayers and support and that of my family to just rely on God that if it was right, the door would be opened. And that was fine. The, the first two, ah, they were okay. But the last one hit me quite hard. It was like, ah, oh, okay, you know, when I'm trusting in God, but actually I really would have liked that job. That, that would have been, I, I had a, a real passion for it, trying to get into uh, educational, uh, nursing education. Uh, and it was something that I really could have seen myself doing. And afterwards, I was a bit, a bit low. Uh, I tried to let myself have no more than about 24 hours and then try and kick myself up the backside and whatever. And it was like, no, 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 come on, come on. You can do this. It's fine. There'll be other doors. It's all right. The Lord has been faithful. Just trust. That's the blessing. You know, the Lord, you've asked for an answer. The Lord has given you an answer very clearly. It's fine. And then following on from that, I got an email <laughs> about a certain meal to say, I'm, 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 I've had this thought from this crazy person at Gov saying, I've had this thought and I can't get it out of my head and, and I'd love the opportunity to talk to you and, and Kat, who's my wife, about it to see what you think. And as we all met and we talked about it, 
it was very obvious that the Lord was putting that on, on that cause, all our hearts. And then we started looking at dates. And it, afterwards, it, it, I realized that if I'd been successful in the job that I really wanted, I'd have been working on the 30th of December. I wouldn't have been available. That is the added extra unexpected blessing for me. That trusting in the Lord, that the Lord blesses obedience and trust. For those that know him and trust in him and put their hope and faith in him, we will always be blessed. The unexpected comes in the fact that we may not necessarily expect how we are blessed. If you're going for a job and you do pray that, Lord, if this is the right job, I want you to open that door. I want you to make it very, very clear. And if it's the wrong, again, I want to make it very, very clear. Don't let me go down this road and I step out in faith. And if you get the job, fantastic. But if you don't get the job, although it's hard, it's still an answer to prayer. The Lord is still being faithful. And in his scripture, it says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans for you to prosper, not hinder. To bless you. And when you look at the image of God as the father, again, it says repeatedly, what father, when his son asks him for a loaf of bread, gives him a steak? Or a stone, or something that's going to hurt him? What he gives us may be unexpected in our eyes. But we look at our lives in the now. Going back to that wonderful word of prophecy that we had this morning. God sees the whole plan. He sees where we were, where we are, and where we're going. He knows where we're going. He knows the plans he has for us. He knows where he wants us. And he will bless us. Whether we want it or not, sometimes. <laughs> he puts us in situations to grow, to develop. He allows us, just as he did Job, to be tested on occasions. The devil will attack us. Why? Because we are in receipt of the promise of Christ. We are a threat. But the blessing comes in the knowledge that that war is already won. As I said last week about being in the fullness of blessing. Paul writes, that which I strive to achieve, I am not yet in full, full receipt of. But I know who holds it. I know the promise of the blessing that I hold on to. So I just want to finish with this, and then I think uh, there's a, a, word, a couple of words that people would like to bring. Just going back to that text in Matthew and reiterating. A person's first encounter with God can be truly unexpected. So yes, there is such a thing as unexpected blessing. Once you know and love the Lord, it's his timing that will be unexpected. So it's cliched, but when it comes to blessing, expect the unexpected. Look for it. Chase after it. Because the more we seek God's heart, the more we align ourselves with him and his word and his way, it's everywhere. It's in every little moment. As I said, start the day saying, Lord, excited to see where you will bless me today. And end each day in thanks and praise and worship of the blessings that have appeared.
Bring something up or yeah, I can do it. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I don't mind. 